In today's video, I'm going to take a look at six reasons why you should make a will. I'm going to also take a look at some common mistakes when making a will and some good ideas. So let's get started. The first reason for making a will is that you decide who gets what. So essentially, how your assets will be distributed on your debt will be set out in your will in accordance with your wishes. Otherwise, the Succession Act of 1965 determines who gets what. And that's something that you probably will want to retain control of. The second reason is if you have children, a will allows you to provide for those children and also the special needs of a loved one. So it may well be that if you have minor children, you may want to appoint different trustees or different guardians, depending on the particular circumstances. But if you have children, if you have minor children in particular, it's a very good reason for making a will. There's a tax advantage as well in making a will because it can ensure if it's drafted correctly and some thought and consideration is put into it to ensure the minimum amount of tax going to the state. Otherwise, it's an intestacy situation and you do lose control of where your assets go and you lose any benefit or advantage that you might have from some smart, shrewd tax planning. The fourth reason is to do with the administration of your estate. Who looks after your estate when you pass away? It's cheaper and faster to administer your estate with a will rather than an intestacy situation. And you're going to have an executor as well. You're going to choose the executor. That leads on to reason number five. You pick the executor. You choose who handles your affairs on debt rather than having the law decide. Because if you don't pick an executor, if you don't make a will, then you have an intestacy situation and who is entitled to administer your estate will be determined by court rules. And that sets out a hierarchy of people who have an entitlement to administer your estate. Again, you may not want that and it may lead to some dispute or division. If you make a will, you appoint an executor and that person or persons looks after your estate and administers it. That really means gathering in the assets and ascertaining the liabilities and making for a neat tidying up of your affairs, uh, quite frankly. The sixth reason is really peace of mind, why you should make a will. The peace of mind that comes from knowing that you are not leaving problems behind for your loved ones when you pass away is priceless, genuinely priceless. And it is a comfort that you know that there isn't going to be a haymaker of a row because as the saying goes, where there's a will, there's a row. But um, it's even more true where there's no will, there's an even bigger row. Important questions to consider then. You could consider these points depending on your particular circumstances. Minor children. If you have minor children, you may need to appoint guardians and or trustees and or set up a trust. That's something that you need to get advice on. But particularly if you have minor children, you may want to appoint different guardians from trustees or the same people could act as executors of your will and guardians and trustees. This would only come about if you are married and you have children and um, both you and your spouse uh, regrettably and catastrophically uh, lose your life in the same accident. Well, in those situations, you do need to have an executor, somebody else apart from your spouse to deal with your affairs. More than one executor, it can be a good idea to appoint more than one executor. An executor, again, is the person who administers the estate of the deceased person. A gift over clause is something that you need to consider. You may need a gift over clause to ensure that you benefit your grandchildren in the event of your child predeceasing you. So to be clear, if your child is married and has children and your child predeceases you, well then the gift that you may have intended going to the children of your child may not actually benefit because what you intended going to the children may in fact go to your child's spouse. So 
that's something you need to be you need to be careful about common mistakes alternative executors if you appoint alternative executors your will will fail for uncertainty so if you appoint as executors mary or john for example it's not clear which of them is to be the executor and it's not clear that both of them are to be executor and it's possible or probable that your will will fail for uncertainty number two a witness or his spouse cannot benefit under a will that's something you need to be careful as well just in terms of execution of the will and the witnessing of the signature number three a will is revoked by marriage but it's not revoked by divorce so that's something that you need to be aware of as well and the fourth common mistake is lack of clarity causing the will to fail if the will is uncertain or unclear or opaque or confused or badly drafted it it's quite possible that it will fail and if that's the case then it simply becomes an intestacy situation the will that you may have created yourself will be of no value no use and it will be an intestacy so that will defeat the purpose of having drafted a will in the first instance so that's why it's a good idea to get somebody who knows what they're doing that is a solicitor to help you or to draft the will for you trust then is something that you need to consider a will trust allows you to put assets into the ownership of trustees for the ultimate benefit of someone well, someone else a simple trust would be a situation where you may wish to give for example a house or a property to a child but clearly the child at the age of 13 or 14 or 15 is far too immature and cannot legally own the property in any event so you would put it into trust for the benefit of the child and it will be transferred in the first instance then to trustees and they hold the legal registered ownership of the property but they hold it for the benefit of the beneficiary which would be the child and when the child comes of age either 18 or 21 or whatever age you stipulate then the trustees simply transfer the property from them from their ownership into the ownership of the child trusts can be important in protecting assets which might otherwise be at the mercy of creditors that's a slightly different issue but it may well be the case that a uh, trust is a good idea in order to prevent somebody who has debt issues or debt problems from having their assets uh, attacked because something can be put into trust for them and uh, perhaps they'll be able to get more time to resolve their debt situation or enter into some arrangement and then ultimately when the coast is clear as it were uh, and when their creditors have been satisfied with whatever arrangement then the property can be transferred to them safely without the fear that it's going to be picked apart by creditors. Hope you find this video useful. If you do, give us a thumbs up down below and you may be interested in subscribing to my YouTube channel. Um, thanks for watching.